leadership and that leadership abilities that liber leadership capabilities we need to in enhance in every one of us i said time and again that the days has gone when we used to say that the principal of the institution or a vice chancellor or a dean is or a head of department is the leader no in the today's context to become a quality institute and to be a very specific to develop our student to be an employable to be a good citizen we need to demonstrate good leadership skills and abilities having that obviously good governance is there leadership capabilities are there equally we require a management system the the procedures are required the structure is required so that whatever we have planned is well delivered so friends this is my uh, the theme of the program this is in just what we are going to discuss in today's session i am going to share with you one ppt small ppt uh, and then i'll 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 convert i'll divert to my presentation as such i want you to relax nowadays because of so many constraint we go for online training programs but it's very good that you all being connecting to this program from the corners of the country and through this program through such a session we just begin to think on or rather those are already working on this particular theme you can enhance your capabilities your expertise in that particular area so one thing which i always say to my faculty members that always we are looking for something else and that something else is nothing but a success now when we talk of success definitely we would like to know really are what is success and to have that i am just sharing you one one small ppt which will just share with you will tell you about what success we are looking for the example of that the example of the success to me whenever i am working in different organization i always say that yaar for me every lecture is very important when we talk about quality in education the quality of education begins with a single lecture and hence when we talk about the success which we look about the quality see what we talks about the success in our area just just quick moving to the a uh, slide presentation we talk of slide really what is success to love of an and to and much much things whenever we do in our life so we have to often we we generally forgotten and we don't even laugh so we laugh often and much but it is not only sufficient my dear friends we have to go for more many task of that to win the respect of intelligent people and affection of the children our success is for that to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends to appreciate beauty that is really a success where we can go into that to find the best in others when we talk of success how really we can work yeah to find best in the others to live the world not alone but to the world a bit better whether by a healthy child a garden patch or a redeem social condition to even one life has been easier because you have lived 
this is how success is so friends when we talk of success everyone we are looking for the success and these few slides which i have shared with you these are the different different flavors these are the different aspect and dimensions of the success we everyone look for something good something excellent in our life we see that something we have good friends we learn something good from our friends we learn learn something when somebody appreciate you so that success success and success and we as a teacher our life is a is a full of full of joy full of success and satisfaction only and only because teaching is a noble profession the national education policy 2020 and the program mother mohan malviya mission of teacher training has given us an insight on really what education we should do it what type of education what type of the duties what type of the plans we have to prepare so that we can really go and function and deliver a quality so friends with this success to which every one of to are looking for we now go to the our official presentation of today's session i'll once again share with you screen and a ppt you are always welcome to ask me any questions if you have any time you can ask me the questions i'm just opening this one sec give me time please is it this screen is available uh, can be visible to you yes yes sir yeah good now my topic of the presentation is academic leadership governance and management how a strategic way for career and professional development as i said you sometime before everyone will look, look for success in our life the definition of success differ from each other but obviously one is looking for as a maslow says going for a self actualization going about the satisfaction and that has to be planned in the way that we systematically and strategically develop our abilities as a professors as a teacher and uh, deliver to the society so that we can attain to the objectives of education in general and to that obviously academic leadership matters and to that governance and management we have heard of leadership today we talk about academic leadership for that what type of governance is required and how to manage all these things i understand that the audience connected to three this program these are the nobel professionals you are all teachers as i said to you it's a nobel profession to being a teachers i know that you are from the humanities you are from science and technologies you are from commerce and management i have heard of that i have i know about it and in keeping these things in mind i have designed my presentation to all of us the demography to which you and me are serving is either of this five demography either in a rural area we are serving or in a tribal area in semi urban area in urban area and metro area the purpose of showing this slide is that when i am working in a metro and when i am working in a urban area and i am working in a tribal area my strategies need to be different there we require different type of the leadership and that leadership ability so one who is going to deliver we must know to which demography who are the target audience to which we are going to develop them 
as a as a very well positive citizen democratic citizens of the country the knowledgeable person of the country and really an employable person so this demography we need to consider whenever we want to demonstrate the leadership and whenever we want to go for a governance and the management of the organization i know that all of you those who have joined you must have been there of from this one of the area of this the domains when we talk of a target audience in hei higher education institution is you know my dear friends these are mixed and diverse student population rural urban languages the student coming to an institute to a department or to a program they are mixed not only gender wise but there is individual differences with respect to the interest attitude aptitude knowledge socio economic background their exposure to the society so we whenever we think of providing an academic leadership we'll have to think about who are those target audience to which are there and as i said to you there are individual differences to me a academic leadership begins when my each and every student is being trained and educated in the way he want to learn what is his career what is his personal goal what is his career goal and identifying these individual differences and guiding him or her on a right track on a right track and suggesting him of his future career and professional avenues is task of that and for that every one of you right from the vice chancellor sir if you are from the universities or dean or you are if you are a principal or head of department or even as a faculty we have to focus on to this type of the leadership we have to think about what are the career and life goals these are fundamental things that if i have to provide an academic leadership i must know my audience i must know the individual differences i must know that everyone has got career and life goal many times you might have experience because as i told you when we move from place to place location to location because of the exposure because of the background and because of the education in which or education culture in which they have developed we, they are sometime very well known about their career and life goals but sometimes they are not very much known about the career and goals so we must know that our audience our target audience must focus on career and goals and life goals in this way when we go for leadership we must have a focus on the policy guidelines today as we are meeting here as a part of madan mohan malviya mission teacher training program on sensitizing on national education policy 2020 the incoming few slides are might be viewed by you earlier through different lectures i am presenting them in the context of the academic leadership in context what what type of governance is required what type of management is required to reach to that so in this national education policy 2020 we have to go for a one multidisciplinary and holistic education why academic leadership is required why governance is required because the design is is such that the core of the national education policy is developing multidisciplinary and holistic education and the philosophy in action which we are going to see but before that what is the what is the multidisciplinary approach is going to be useful the multidisciplinary approach will help student to achieve their career goals and their life goal very systematically and scientifically for example i am master of business management in finance i can use if i have a multidisciplinary approach i can use my knowledge base whatever i have earned through mba program in the 
IT field, if I go in the information technology field, if at all I go to the agricultural field, or even I go to the societal in an NGO, I can the multidisciplinary approach develop the different dimensions. And equally important, along with the multidisciplinary dimension, we require holistic development of the student. Doesn't mean that in the past we couldn't achieve that, but my dear professors, those we have connected, now is once again an opportunity given to us to shape the future of the, our country. Future of rather, I can say, globe. And in that context, the holistic development will help us. Today, when we talk about the employment percentage, the availability of the jobs, the percentage of employments, the employability abilities, then we will find that these are the two very element approach, element things or gaps, which is making students to gain, gaining good employment, good career opportunities. And that's why this national education policy is central to the multidisciplinary approach and holistic education. There we required a academic leadership. There we required good governance, right from curriculum design, your vision, your mission, and we have to properly govern with the policies and procedure. Let us see what are the philosophies in the action. By 2040, all higher education institute shall aim to become multidisciplinary institution and shall aim to have larger student enrollment for the creation of vibrant multidisciplinary communities. This is the context. This is one of the context of our today's session. We want to become multidisciplinary institution. We require good leadership in curriculum design. We require good leadership in the, the designing the curriculum. Not only curriculum, delivery strategy, the type of learning experiences we need to go for. And we have to have, as you must have reading in the recent news, we have heard that the university situation or university is now day by day are diminishing. Diminishing means what? In the future, the national education policy is going to give focus on, emphasize on the academy, autonomy to the institute. We are going to have an autonomous institution the affiliation pattern will go away very soon. By 2030 to 2035, it won't be there. But then, even into that, we have to develop a multidisciplinary institution with a vibrant, to create a vibrant multidisciplinary communities. And in that context, we'll have to think about what type of academic leadership is required, what abilities we really want to develop, and those components we are going to see into the percent. You know that, friends, the type of institutions we will have, multidisciplinary universities and higher education institutions. And when we talk university, I mean, of course, multidisciplinary institutions that offers UG and PG with high quality of teaching, research, and community engagement. This last word is very important. The type of institution which we are looking for is UG and PG program with high quality teaching. What is the meaning of high quality of teaching? High quality of teaching is designing of a learning experiences which will be useful to the world of work, which they can transform in their real life situation. Of course, for that, we required a research quality, research is required, and obviously community engagement is going to really contribute in the development of the student. So that type of institutions will be there. Then we'll be having an autonomous degree granting colleges, we call as a academic colleges, large multidisciplinary institution of high learning, granting UG, and primarily focusing on UG teaching little smaller than a university. See, 
as i told you sometime before we are looking for a autonomous institution or universities with multidisciplinary education or we are looking for a autonomous colleges which will be have a large multidisciplinary institution of higher learning little smaller up to lesser than 5000 more than 5000 it will go to the uh, uh, university status and hence NEP agenda is to focus on these student centric education. We want to develop. I mean, here academic leadership is required. We require flexibility. You might have you might have heard to that a student centric education and through which a, there will be a flexibility exit and entry system. You might have by this time in many webinar and seminar. and even this program you must have heard that now we are looking for a exit after first year exit after second year after third year also one can take an exit and he can also complete for a some honors program so there is going to be a flexibility of exit and entry after first year second year and third year but we require a leadership where student is taking exit going for a job what type of curriculum what type of add on or on the job training is to be given what type of other credits are to be teach to him so that he become capable there is the only then only we can enroll more student to that because as you know that many of the student they don't go for higher education or they drop in between because of their personal requirement personal needs they require jobs many of people are the from the, the the poor family we we require to bring them to the flow of education so if you have a flexibility now here flexibility is going to provide into our and their academic leadership is required multidisciplinary education suppose i am a man of say commerce or a management but i am interested to learn artificial intelligence or i am a man of a science i want to learn in economics or i am a man of a technology i want to really learn sociology and economics this multidisciplinary education is essential here we again every time we talk about the <laughs> leadership in education we need to provide internship with skills we want to develop ethical and moral reasoning how we can develop this ability here again as a teacher as a curriculum developer as a researcher we need to develop an a curriculum a delivery and teaching strategy so that we can develop into that knowledge and practice of human and constitutional values human values and constitutional values i am going to show you a slide sometime before when we go ahead into that is very important to become we you must have heard about by this time intercultural education or intercultural gaps when we talk about digital gaps and intercultural gaps it is only because of human values or sometime at a national level constitutional values that knowledge will help us to work in a intercultural society and that we need to develop that's why need to develop a curriculum and not only the curriculum we need to plan our teaching learning activities our academic calendar our teaching strategies in such a way that we go for this proper planning of the human development through the human values and constitutional citizenship skills and values that we want to call knowledge of india so friends all these parts including the environmental awareness of water resources etc etc these are the nep agenda now when we talk of a student from arts domain commerce and management domain science and technology domain health science domain we want to develop these essential skills and to develop this essential skill a leader like you who is trained who know that how the academic leadership is to be provided so that strategically these elements can be incorporated in the curriculum in institute design in teaching learning processes and that we have to 
plan whenever we go for that. And hence, the essential capabilities that we want to develop among the students are holistic health, global citizenship education, knowledge of India, and organic living. These are the essential capabilities. Out of that, whatever I have shown you earlier, when I come to this, the holistic health, organic living, knowledge of India, global citizenship education. I know that many of you must have gone through the National Assessment and Accreditation Council. In that, if you see to the NAC values, one of the NAC values talk about the development of human values and ethics. One NAC value, core value, talks about the developing global employment opportunities. So, to we, we look to the opportunities which we are available to us. And in that context, in that context, we'll have to develop a holistic health. And that's why when we go for curriculum design, if you see for the University Grant Commission guidelines given on the curriculum design, and even different state, including state of Maharashtra, has issued different guidelines that what should be the structure of the curriculum so that the holistic health is developed. Not the meaning of holistic health is as said by Mahatma Gandhiji, development of body, mind, and soul. Both, not only cognitive development, but equally important that he or she should have a affection, emotional level, attitude development, skill development. Obviously, when you do a skill and emotion, we talk about development of holistic health for the students. So, these essential capabilities are to be developed. So, professors, that we have to see and we have to understand the context of academic leadership. We will have to think on these different directions, different aspects when we are preparing for the uh, development of the leadership as a whole. And as seen, what we have to do, as said by my favorite A.P. Abdul Kalam sir, he says that we should have five types of minds. Disciplinary mind. If I am from the economics, or languages, or social sciences, or chemistry, zoology or botany, or I am from commerce and finance, I must have a disciplinary mind. That disciplinary mind we need to develop, my dear friend, and that knowledge, the strategies that we'll have to develop there, we, we require a academic leadership across the institution, across the university. Creative minds, APJ Abdul Kalam sir says, disciplinary mind should have a creative mind. A creative mind will come out with new, new theories, new application, new approaches to solve the problem, new techniques to solve the problem. So if I'm using learning and economics, like how I can use my theories of economics in the development of a small community or a tribal area? Or suppose I'm in a science graduate, how I can really help in the development of the different spaces? Or how I can really help for the development, not in the development, enhancement and sustenance of the spaces? So a creative mind is equally required. Third type of the mind, which FPJ Abdul Kalam says, we must have a synthesizing mind. A synthesizing mind is nothing but in national education policy, we talk about a multidisciplinary education. This multidisciplinary education is a synthesizing mind. The same example I will give. I am a student of economics. My knowledge of, knowledge of economics, I am applying in the industry. I am applying in the health science. I am applying in the agriculture. I'm app applying in the production. So this multidisciplinary mind I need to develop. If I'm a student of a commerce, huh, that commerce accounting for different organization, I'm not there only for doing a commerce, but 
what type of the commerce, what type of the organization, what type of the taxation is required for the different type of the organization. If it's an IT company, it's a global company, it's an international company, or it's an agricultural company, so he or she must be. So in our national education policy, as APJ Abdul Kalam says, we have to go for a synthesizing mind. Fourth type of the mind which emphasized by APJ Abdul Kalam and which is the component of our national education policy is ethical minds. I still remember I happened to attend one online seminar of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji sir. The, he was conducting a meeting, online meeting during COVID days of all scientists who are working outside India. And when he was conducting a session, there was one question raised by the audience. And the question came that, sir, you have developed many Indian Institute of Sciences, Indian Institute of Management, Indian Institute of Technology, but I think we need to develop a Indian Institute of Trust. Trust. Ethics are important. Ethical mind is very important because if everyone, to you and me, how ethically I follow norms and standard, citizenship caution, going little micro level, me as a father or a mother or a son or a daughter or a family or a member of a society or a member of a nation, how or as a teacher, how I can develop an ethical mind that we have to think. And the last very important, what APJ Abdul Kalam says, is respectful mind. We should have a respect for our country. We should have a respect for our own self, our family, our society, our nation, our knowledge. And my dear professors, that is second theme of our national education policy, the multidisciplinary education and holistic education. Here, if we follow this type, five types of mind by APJ Abdul Kalam, sir, you will find here we really require to work a very systematic way. Governance is required, we require a management into that. So the APJ Abdul Kalam, sir, which has given, has got a very important to this program. Now, the academic leadership in context to the good governance and management what is required? New teachers, sometimes including the existing teacher, need rigorous preparation and opportunities for continuous professional development along with academic and professional support. My dear professor, in between, I am showing this particular slide. In this background, in this background, we need to we need to understand that academic leadership in context to the good governance and management in higher education institution, we teacher require rigorous preparation. It's not that we are not prepared, but see the last line. Along with academic and professional support, we require to develop this academic leadership into ourselves. And hence, it is said by John F. Kennedy that leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. To become a good leader, good academic leader, learning is must. So is to so, through the Mother Mal Malviya mission for teacher training, this session on academic leadership, governance and management is a learning experience to all of you. Definitely, in between, I will expect a few questions from you so that we can go on to the right track and we can be useful to deliver the leadership, governance and management to our education. So as John F. Kennedy says that leadership and learning are indispensable to each other, the earlier slides and the next slides will also focus on the same things. Now, what are the milestones to all of us? The milestones are 
obtain higher education and quali qualification i want every every one of you i want every one of you to obtain higher education those who have done phd go for post doc go for more training go for mooc course swayam course so that in your domain and multidisciplinary you go and reach to the higher so as to me personally i believe that if i develop if i am have a capability to deliver through these milestones i will be able to really deliver to the society opt education as field of career and profession of course you all have opted really i am with you and i am like you only uh, i really appreciate all of you for joining this career but opting education as a field of career and profession is we have to give something more this my life if i say what is your life yes education career is one bigger aspect of my life if i professionally handle it definitely along with my life goals my career goals can be achieved and that's why this is of our ability to go for an education as a career and profession accept the responsibility in the educational institute you must be accepting but why i am shown this particular line to you we have to create an academic culture a participative management a decentralization in the institution so that everyone accept the responsibility in the educational institute because it is not the job of you and me to develop the future nation we all need to work together and that's why we have to demonstrate a leadership in such a fashion that people start accepting the responsibility in the educational institute and that's why it matters how you have a communication with your colleagues how you demonstrate leadership how you strategically plan how do you show the courage to the faculty and so on to so on self study what to teach and how to teach is not only on the subject domain if i am a man of a law dealing with the civil laws or the criminal laws or a simple constitution how i can what i have to teach in this what constitutional aspect dimensions i have to teach so we must know in short what are the outcomes of that course that subject and how i can develop those ability among the students we required a self study into that i'm i'm touching to the micro level as well as macro level but i'm beginning this journey with every one of us self these milestones we have to plan for then start teaching research research is must whenever we go for that we have to go for continuous professional development we have to go for guiding students and mentoring i have good number of examples my dear professors that guiding student mentoring student brings significant change in the student personality not only personality their career and life too so is to say as i said you in second and third line opt education as a field of career and profession and accept the responsibility and go for continuous professional development is only and only for guiding student and mentorship this leadership we need to develop my job is not only to follow the timetable given to me by the department or an institute by the principal or by dean but i will say that i will continuously guide the student mentor the student so that he reach so beyond the classroom we have to work for that thinking and critical discussions on different issues there are different issues when we talk about education we have a different issues we have an, a very critical issue which we very much discuss even in the begin individual differences 
the degree of exposure to the student, the requirement of the job, the challenge of developing the depth of knowledge, the challenge of developing the application level knowledge, using different techniques of teaching and learning. So we need to have a th thinking and critical discussion on different issues, not only that, how we can bring students, this privileged group, tribal group, poor student, rural student in the flow of education. It's all about academic leadership, my dear friends. And obviously that required governance, that required the management to all of us. Assessing, evaluating and interpreting. This assessment evaluation talks very important to us whenever we go into this space and and so and so and so on. So these milestones are for ourselves and equally we have to because obviously when we attend such type of the session we understand yeah really we have we know leader we know leadership then what is the difference between leadership and academic leadership then these are the different attributes or character of a leadership which will help them the the goal to attain the educational goal to attain as such and of course I must say every one of you, which I do, I may show you sometime later if it time permits, establish your own philosophy of education. You will learn. You will have a continuous professional development. You will obtain higher education and qualification. But then when you are teaching in a college, in the demography, in your domain, in one day, you will establish your own philosophy, your own context, your own style of education. And we want that. That is the day where you are really on the right way of developing or demonstrating the academic leadership. This I, this I expect every one of you to develop and establish the philosophy of your own education. As we talk about Rabindranath Tagore, we talk about Mahatma Gandhi ji, we talk about Swami Vivekananda, and so many, so many uh, our uh, forefathers. So why students take admission to higher education institution? And why do we teach? See how the academic leadership, governance and management, the journey begins. Somewhere, of course, we are going to answer this question in our due course of time. But this is very much we have to think about. Why students take admission in higher education institution? Do they really know? Are we required to guide them? Are they very much clear about their future of their life and career? And why do we teach them? And what is the expected outcome of the combined efforts? Why do we teach them? And what is the expected out of, outcome of the combined efforts? I don't mean to say that, my dear professors, that in the past days, we have not thought of these questions. But with the change scenario globally, the position our country has gained internationally and at the same time, the challenges that we have at home and opportunity to demonstrate globally, we need to think this in a different fashion, a different type of academic leadership is required when we talk about this. And hence to say that, as APJ Abdul Kalam says, let us sacrifice our life today so that our children can have a better tomorrow. This is, see, we know, even see, looking to the photograph of APJ Abdul Kalam, we get inspired, we get motivated, we get so much, so much energy into us. And as it is said, as said by the APJ Abdul Kalam, let us sacrifice our life today 
so that our children can have a better tomorrow. Obviously, Honorable APJ Abdul Kalam, sir, want to say that sacrifice our life as a teacher doesn't mean that you don't enjoy the life. You enjoy the life. You should also equally should know your career goal and your life goal. Hmm? You are all my good friends. I'm a little senior to you. So I'm taking a, a chance to give some, some of my thoughts to you that, yes, please enjoy. Please enjoy your life. Think of your career. Think of your life. Think of that all where we can really give to this society because our profession is really different. We are teachers. Ultimately, our teacher and our sacrifice, which you do it today, which our children can do it better tomorrow. So then really we go for developing this uh, leadership in education. In this background, see, I have taken almost, almost uh, last 30, 48 minutes to prepare you the fundamentals of leadership. Fundamentals of leadership. Because uh, what is leadership now? If you come to know, you must know the context. And I have any, I don't know, I have a habit of, if I'm teaching, I must teach you application level. That one should feel that, yes, here, here I require leadership. And leadership is what? I require to develop insight. I need to take initiative. I need to have vision for that. I must have a knowledge for that. I must work on a mission mode. I should motivate my people. I should develop a teamwork. I must have a good effective communication. I should develop a team. So on to so on to so on. So in these aspect, in this background, we, we go now the foundations are to that, develop professional capabilities for successful career and growth. Now let us see what is leadership and what is academic leadership or education leadership. Leadership is any active activities tied to the core work of the organization that are designed by the organizational members to influence the motivation, knowledge, affect or practice of other organizational members. See what is leadership. These are all activities as I told, as I told you, motivating, taking initiative, inspiring others, guiding others, mentoring others, Showing them vision, showing them mission in a core work. Our is education is a core work of the organization that are designed by the organizational members. Our, our this is already designed to influence the motivation, knowledge, affect, or practices of other organizational members. And hence, when we talk of educational leadership, a similar definition is the process of enlisting and guiding the talent and energies of teachers, pupils, and parents towards achieving the common educational aim. This is a broader definition of an academic leadership. See the broader scope of you and me in the organization. I understand, as I told you, that you come from the below different uh, domains, educational domain background, from different demographic background. But we are teachers. Few may be assistant professor, few may be senior assistant professor, associate professor, few may be professors from these different domains. So we need to understand that our scope of educational leadership is the process of enlisting and guiding the talents and energies of teachers, peoples, and parents toward achieving common educational goal. It is your ability. It is your leadership. It is your governance, which you are bringing all together to achieve the goals of education. 
you must be knowing the goals of education we are going to throw light on that because i want an academic leadership my professor must know the fundamental elements of education at the same time the context in which academic leadership is required of so with this aspect when we emerge the leadership in education see how the emergence of leadership in education occurs demands were made on higher education institution for higher levels of people's achievement and higher education institution expected to improve and reform see how the academic leadership has emerged expectation accompanied by calls for accountability at the higher education level then comes administration and management are term that imply stability through the exercise of control and supervision the concept of leadership was favored because it conveys dynamism and proactivity see my friends here the concept of leadership is favored because it conveys dynamism proactivity we will not we are not followers we are leaders you might be a, for example a lowest element in your organization but you should have a proactive you must be dynamic you must demonstrate leadership capabilities and administration and management these are really a stability through the exercise these are more control and supervise no we want control supervise environment but we want dynamic environment we want proactiveness into that so why this emergence of leadership in education is remain or started this dialogue this particular slide shows to you and hence why we really required an academic leadership is to generate results and achieve your organization vision through change focused leadership generate results these results are nothing but educational goals and achieve your organization vision through change focused leadership you all must have experienced and appreciated that when you are going through the accreditation process by nac you have developed new concept new procedures and today you respect them you follow them because you have now realized that it's really giving giving you good results and obviously and that was the reason of having nac and nba and all accreditation is that we want to achieve the organization vision through a change focused leadership and that's why all this academic leadership is required of foster productivity by designing work practices routines systems and structures if you go with a conventional approach we won't be able to get generate the result not able to attain the educational goals so we need to foster the productivity one example of a productivity is that suppose i am teaching i am developing or fostering the productivity of the teaching by giving student a learning experiences which are very close to the society or very close to the world of work designing work practices when we talk about designing work practices going for seminars workshops experiential learning internships and also we have to have our routines systems and structure need to change so if time permit i am going to show you a slide now entire our academic calendar we need to change we have to go with our very systematic plan student centric plan in such a way that this productivity can be there and that's why we require engage people from across culture backgrounds and language 
through effective communication no student should deprive of education today i was reading a newspaper or somewhere digital news i was reading one mr anand has started a digital platform to teach to the poor student it is free of cost this is an example i am telling you so why academic leadership is required because we are not there only to teach the student who come to the class but even to those who are coming to the class engaging people across the culture backgrounds because we know that student in the class are of a different background different culture languages through a effective communication that's why we required them then cultivate empowerment resiliency integrity and growth through your personal development and development of other why we required leadership we have to cultivate empowerment resiliency integrity because if we are not i have seen please don't take it otherwise when my when i talk about the uh, institution i have seen there is no integrity within the department what is this within the department we will have to have an integrity if that integrity is not there how we are going to develop how we are going to develop student the ability into that so we have to see that we develop develop a power the ability the resiliency resiliency is nothing but it is the capability that you develop you should be able to manage the things okay integrity has to be there and grow through your personal development and development of other that's why sometime before i say that even to do that even we need to continuously undergo a professional development training continuing education program doing research that will develop your capability of de delivering and demonstrating academic leadership so that is why we required and obviously skills knowledge and positions you need to make a transformative impact it's very important students society sees to you look towards you as a noble profession as a model how me in my institute in my class to my target audience develop a transformative impact through my knowledge skills and positions that i develop through my research through my leadership through my engagements that will have to develop into and that's why my dear professor the academic leadership is required and to have this definitely we look for the basic concept of education as many of you must have heard about this concept what mahatma gandhi ji said education is development of body mind and soul why i am reading this many of you must be knowing this concept by mahatma gandhi ji but to me i have to check my present leadership am i developing only mind am i not developing on the body and soul body means skills part of that health part of that. soul means emotion affection attitudes concern quality consciousness so when you educate educate is not just in a degree my professor we have to develop a body mind and spirit i am a teacher of a political science but it's my equally duty is that i develop a political science domain mind of the students not only that creative mind as said by the dr apj abdul kalam sir synthesizing mind for that i will develop the skill and also ethical mind respectful minds what swami vivekananda says education is the manifestation of divine perfection which already exists in the human being 
we as a teacher and when you are demonstrating academic leadership when you are developing the practices and procedures and system we need to understand that as said by swami vivekananda education is the manifestation of divine perfection which already exists in the human being we need to find the 60 or 100 student in a class divide into 10 teachers or 6 teachers and try to understand the ability of the students where they are where they want to go what are the inherent abilities what are inherent skills what is their goals because many students they do have otherwise i have seen in my in my career i have seen a student gaining good grades in the injury but one day told me sir i am not interested in engineering having top most grade from best engineering college but since not interested in engineering want to go for management i guided and i based upon the abilities i checked her ability i requested can you prepare for iams to getting iams and now the dear professor i must tell you she got admission in 3 to 4 iams she graduated and now working in a good company this is one example i am telling you so we need to find out the but some students may be very good in skills some may be good in languages that we have to find what rabindranath tagore says the highest education is that which does not merely give us an information but makes our life a harmony with all existence see my professor i am reading this definition in the context of academic leadership we have to demonstrate we have to create the governance and management process in such a that these concepts of educations are properly touched a very elaborated by sri arbindo a very excellent i like and that's why i am showing you the last concept of sri arbindo education is meant to bring out the best in the man to develop his potentialities to the maximum to integrate him with himself his surrounding his society his country and humanity to make him the complete man the integral man national education policy 2020 talking other about the holistic development vibrant knowledge society now this definition will give you why leadership is required of and that is what we need to develop if we develop insight into these these uh, concept which have been elaborated definitely we will be able to demonstrate the leadership as such education is the process of facilitating learning or the acquisition of knowledge skills values moral beliefs and habits this is a simple definition this is a simple definition that we when we because what i personally feel uh, some of you might be thinking that why sir is going to such a uh, i mean a very elementary think of education but i believe and i have i have learned lot of things from this definition because that definition has taught me how to teach how to guide the student what should be the mission and vision of the institution on what different elements we should focus that has taught me and that's why i thought of sharing this view to so that you can also take something out of these discussions and hence says when we talk globally in the context of education this is the finding of bologna process internationally these are the objectives of higher education which are internationally accepted please read also those who are having you can take a snap also of this particular slide 
see what is the objective of higher education and why do we require the leadership preparing for employment preparing for life as an active citizen in democratic societies personal development the development and maintenance of a broad and advanced knowledge base while doing the research i found this particular report of bologna process which was earlier only for the european country but after globalization it was made open to all countries those are the part of the globalization and obviously our country is the part of this bologna process and in the design of our curriculums our undergraduate and postgraduate curriculum these objectives are kept in mind now it's a question to you and me out of these four objectives in general i am not talking in specific because there are always exceptions are we focusing on each and every one of these objectives if not then how we can structure it how curriculum can be structured what type of the delivery processes has to be there, there what type of the routine need to be managed how you can empower students so that they become prepared for employment as a active citizen personal development we find student not personally developed forget about personally developed they don't know the different domains of personality development we need to that is objective of higher education and that's why leadership is required and the develop and maintenance of a broad and advanced knowledge base multidisciplinary education personal development is a is a holistic development preparing for the life as an active citizen is also a part of holistic development and obviously preparing employment is an objective of higher education so we all need to see see i know that things can change drastically if you take decision today if you take decision today means once your training gets over or even after this session gets over if you think over for half an hour yaar we have listened to one of the session on academic leadership and governance and management something yes i think we can do that can we take a step can we become a proactive let us work at your individual level slowly team will develop slowly team will develop first small team will develop and then this team will go on developing and developing and developing and it will go to the institution and to the university but we need to here we require a leadership of that and that's why that's why the vision of national education policy you all very known the vision of the policy is to instill among the learners a deep rooted pride in being indian not only in thought but also in spirit intellect and deeds as well as to develop knowledge skills values and disposition that support responsible commitment to human rights sustainable development and living and global well being thereby reflecting a truly global citizen vasudev kutumbakam see the vision of national education policy 2020 you and me all teachers we have to have a, this vision in mind and if you keep this vision if you understand this vision of our national education policy 2020 what we were supposed to do in the past okay we will do it now doesn't mean that nothing happened till today but we we'll see that yes we become a really a globally known country and people are nowadays they are really accepting our country so see once again only keywords i am reading 
deep rooted pride in being indian one word not only in thought second word spirit third intellect fourth deeds fifth knowledge skills values and dispositions that responsible commitment see this important word we must know and try to develop our vision of the institution in line with the vision nep 2020 whenever we design the curriculum and that is the the beginning of developing a leadership among the students second is sustainable development goal 4 Education is a force multiplier, which enables self-reliance, boost economic growth by enhancing skills, and improve people's lives by opening opportunities for better livelihoods. My dear professors, I need not tell you. the percentage of the poor people in our country the percentage of the tribal this privileged group we know how many of the people are are really working only because of rozi and roti we want to develop safe reliance boost economic growth enhance skill and improve people's lives by opening up the opportunities for the better livelihood this is the unesco sustainable development goal for these three these three slides are the international thought for which we can develop the leadership amongst ourselves to amongst our institution this will tell you yaar yeah, really why we require leadership in the academic institution we were knowing the leaders we know in the in the politics we require leader in society we require leaders similarly now in education that leadership is required because have this academic leadership really will be able to attain these aspects into that and again my favorite my respectable apj abdul kalam says the process of education is to make good humans with skills and expertise enlightened human beings can be created by teachers you and me see what dr apj abdul kalam sir mentioned about that yes the enlightened human beings can be created by teachers that is the power we have and we have to develop on to on that particular aspect so to summarize on this particular point we discuss we 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 talk about aspects in our education how really we can go and how we can really contribute to the societal movement in the development of education and making students life and career the objectives of higher education sustainable development and education higher education should have a mission and vision and of course the bottom line was leadership and management is vital to all these things this is what we discuss my dear friend in this uh, till now in this particular lecture we are going to learn something more i will invite few questions may i have invite two three questions please before i go further please yes may i invite any, any question anybody would like to ask a question yes professors are you with me yes okay we we go ahead if you don't have a questions if you don't have a questions we go ahead okay 
Yes, Mr. Chandrakant. First, sir, can you please ask the question, please? Yes, Professor Chandrakant. First, sir, I think you have raised the hand. Okay, I'll go to the chat box. One question is there. I'll answer that question. Good question. Uh, if student drop exit at first year, what are the job opportunities he or she will have? Okay, okay. Now, a very good question. Very good question. See, this is the this is where we have to design a curriculum. Okay. Suppose I'm taking an example of a Bachelor of Arts student. I am taking a very simple example. Bachelor of Arts. In a Bachelor of Arts, suppose in the first year we are teaching languages, we are teaching history, geography, or political science. We are teaching economics. And now, student want to take exit after first year. Your question is very good. It's very valid question. Now we need to do a small research as, as we did one research that my R student after first year can go and work in an organization. Suppose I want my I want to work further in a sociology, then I will join, go and join some NGO. I will use my whatever I have learned, but before he goes, take exit after first year, please keep in mind, we have to give him two months on the job training. You develop a training program in such a fashion that student is develop the requisite skill to get the jobs required in the world of work. And in addition also, he or she may have to require to give some two credit course on the communication skill, managing the work, etc., etc. So, obviously, this I am giving a general example, but at the institute level, at institute level, we have to come out with the solution into that. Okay. So, very good. Thank you, the Professor Furser, for asking the question. I think you have understood. Now, we'll move ahead with our further discussions. Now, when we talk of see this concept of leadership, which we need to really understand. The concept leader in higher education institution such as university president, deans, department heads, teachers set the vision and direction for the institution. They inspire faculty, staff, students by articulating a compelling mission, fostering a culture of academic excellence and promoting values such as diversity, inclusion and innovation. Effective leadership in higher education encourages collaboration, facilitates strategic planning, and adapts to the evolving needs of students, faculty, and society. Effective academic leadership, governance, and management in higher education require a combination of elements or parameters to ensure institution success sustainability and impact. This is in general, whatever we discuss till now, you can, you can see this is the concept of the academic leadership we require. So as I said, anyone may be a leader. He may be a president or a chancellor or a vice chancellor or a dean 
or in institute principal and head of department and teacher we have to set the vision and direction of the institution we have to inspire faculty staff students by articulating compelling mission we need to have a mission a culture of academic excellence we have to promote the values and that is how my dear professor lot of collaborations is required a strategic planning is also required on which we are also going to discuss in today's session the very important aspect of academic leadership is a setting vision and mission what is what is the element of academic leadership first is setting vision and mission the higher education institution or university has to articulate a clear vision and mission for the institution which reflect values academic goals and commitment to excellence they work with the stakeholders including faculty staff students alumni and community members to develop a shared understanding of the university or institute purpose and aspiration see a academic leader sorry i am i am sharing with you a bad example i visited one institute and uh, they they were telling me about their vision and mission even by just going through the statement of vision and mission i raise a next question sir how many faculty how many students how many stakeholders were involved in the design of vision and mission of the institution dear professor very sorry to say i got a very shocking response the vision and mission was developed by copying the mission and vision of renowned institution and the vision and mission was developed no we don't go for that the vision and mission has to be developed in along with the stakeholders faculty staff students and in that context we have to go and develop our vision and mission of the institution okay i think i think there is there is one more question is coming from uh, professor chandrakant ford sir okay his question his question is uh, uh, his question is uh, that majority of the institutions are governed by the politicians then how the vision of national education policy will attain i agree with you but i partially agree okay i know that here we cannot have lot of deliberations but in short i will tell you if really i want to contribute i alone can contribute how you can okay i am not here to tell you about what i did or what you should did but everyone should do should think of in the given circumstances how i can contribute how i can contribute for the development of nation as a noble teacher okay think over this i don't i don't expect quick response okay i want you to think over that because see i am not teaching you theoretically i am telling you frankly i have 40 years of experience in a higher education institution and in my 40 years of education i have seen different institutions but always we have kept one thing in mind educational goal vision and mission we have to change our strategy we we'll have to totally focus sometimes we have, sometimes you have to work lonely doesn't matter people will join you and in that context i want to say that please and please and please don't 
we get influenced with some wrong leadership and focus that we are noble teachers we are noble leaders and we have to set a vision and mission for the institution for so as an academic leader you will profile that aspect then when we do this particular task equally we have to go for a strategic planning a strategic planning efforts to identify what are the key priorities how to resource allocation to be done and what should be the future course of development we also have a internal and external landscape what opportunities are there what challenges are there what are the emerging possibility trends could be there what challenges could be there and then we have to come out with the best strategies to enhance your academic programs research student services and community engagement okay we have to go strategically my dear professor a strategic planning is bust for all of you you must know as stated in this particular slide you must go what are the thrust area based upon your vision and mission what are the thrust area what should be the course of future development what resources are required all that you should see you should do the sock analysis what are the strength of the institute what are the weaknesses of the institute what are the opportunities of the institution what are the challenges of the institutions the strength of the institutions and opportunities you should have a you should marry them with each other weaknesses can be overcome by taking the challenging activities by accepting the challenges opportunities can be developed to become your future task future course of action and in that way in that way unfortunately very 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 confidently i am telling you my, my dear professors only when national assessment and accreditation council nag and nba mention about the strategic plan and perspective plan vision and mission we have started thinking in that direction but globally there is enough significant focus on the vision and mission strategic planning i conduct one week strategic planning program because this is very important we are shaping the future of the nation you have to train the student you have to prepare them for the employment you have to develop their personality you have to develop them as a citizens you have to develop broad and advanced based knowledge that you cannot go and do only going to a classroom we'll have to go strategically along with classroom activities that to how innovatively you can plan it and that why that's why strategic planning is required you have to think of academic excellence by rigorous standards of teaching research and scholarship standard of teaching is going for not only accreditation qs ranking nrf which also applicable to research and scholarship going for post doc obtaining fellowships then faculty recruitment retention once you appoint continuous professional development then high quality academic experience to the students and contribute to the advancement and knowledge in their respective fields this academic excellence is to be brought into that a b c vision and mission strategic planning academic excellence many point we are going to see this is what academic leadership we have to do when we are going for the development of our institution in that aspect in that context having that the very important aspect to develop the effectiveness in academic leadership we required a visionary leadership we required a strategic planning we required collaborative engagement we required academic excellence we required diversity and inclusion 
we have required ethical leadership. See, the effectiveness in academic leaderships are only possible when we go through that. Resource management will have to go for that. And then and then only we can go with the aspect of that. And for that, you have to align yourself. Your self and self goal with your professional competencies, career, and sustainable development goal four. When I'm saying professional competencies, I did not mention here again of National Education Policy 2020. Our career as an education, and obviously we have to look for sustainable development goal four. This is how we have to prepare and plan ourselves. When we go for a planning, now we talk about academic leadership, governance and management. Leadership, we have seen. Leadership required vision, mission, strategic planning, academic excellence, insight into the academics, in domain, in the synthesizing the education, in creativity in education, developing the holistic mind, and, and, and so on, so on. This is type of the leadership we require. But then, for that, governance is important. Governance begins with vision and mission. For that vision and mission, what are the policies? What are the procedures? What are the projects? And that is what we are going to talk now. But for that, relax. Take a long breath. Talk to self. If you are at home with family, if sitting in an institute with friends and mentors, take some time and write it. What is your mission and vision? What is your mission and vision? How do you plan? Relax. Take a long breath. Forget who is running our institution. Think how you can contribute, how me can contribute in education. How I can develop, who are those students, why they are coming to the institution. Talk to self. And think on self-life goals. What is your mission? What is your vision? What is the policy and mandate you want to go for? I believe, my dear professors, I believe that to provide a leadership to the institute, our individual development is very important. I, do, I don't want to say that you have not yet set your career and life goals, but I want you to focus on that. I want to rethink on that, realign on the, those life goals, career goals in line with the global requirement. NEP requirement. And go for what mission, vision, policy and mandate you want to be. One example I will give of the policy, one example of policy, not vision and mission, looking to the time constant. 
one of the policy which i followed policy of continual professional development what is the policy statement attained at least one one week professional development program organized by the university grant commission or different councils one statement second policy statement publish three peer review journals ugc care journals research papers example example mandate policy you just see how we we have to go with the policy and mandate in that so when you go for development of academic leadership obviously few questions and few strategies and tools that we have to follow in doing that sorry that we have to follow in making things is who am i explore self we don't talk to ourselves talk talk and talk do your own while you are doing who am i do your own what are your strong point what are your weakness point what opportunities are looking for you what are the challenges are there based upon your sock define purpose of life and career what you are your mission what you want to be your vision set the plan the policy mandate action plan search for your hobby and sustain it monitor and review periodically these are the self development tools my dear professor when i am going and leading to an institution or to the university i must give some time to myself to align myself to the institutional mission and visions educational goals sustainable development goal national education policy 2020 and these tools will help you to do the things then we go with a very systematic way of managing these things we do the brainstorming we do a mission and vision and you do a strategic planning approach these are the management tools at institute level in institute level you must have brainstorming taking students taking staff taking faculty institution level departmental level sectoral level you must do a brainstorming or brain writing what are the strengths of the institution what are the weaknesses of the institution what are the opportunities for the institution what are the challenges for the institution what is the purpose of the institute and then define the mission and vision the purpose of the institution will be your mission and the opportunities and challenges will be your vision and for that to reach to your vision and to follow your vision mission use strategic planning approach go strategically okay sometime definitely we'll talk and even today also if, we, if time permits we will talk on this aspect on the how we go for a strategic planning but the management tools for the for to be a for good governance because good governance is only possible provided you have a good mission good vision 
there are policies which support your mission and vision and not only the policy but we have program and action plan which is we call as a strategic plan for implementing your mission and traveling or marching towards your vision statement so this exercise we need to do of the that but obviously when we do this as i told you this is this is the concept this is the concept this is the philosophy i told you sometime before that at at the end of the day you must develop your own own philosophy of education what i did and this i am trying to put this my own me and the world i family society my profession my organization my nation and the world this this me and the world this scope skew be help me to design my vision my mission my policies my mandate my strategies and my action plan and in this fashion we have to go and to work into that but then obviously we have to focus on the two me and organization many times we focus more on organization but to me i want you to focus on self to me and organization to be a good leader and to have a good governance in the organization you must know me and you must know organization too this focus on me and organization will help you to provide good leadership positive leadership growth leadership academic leadership to the organization and you can govern the organization in a better way then what is the mission many times when we talk of governance we know that to deliver and demonstrate leadership good governance is required and the journey of good governance start with the mission and vision of the institution then really what is mission we must know you and me must know we have seen read and thanks you many of you must be involved in the development of the mission statement but what is mission mission is in single sentences what is the organization at in answers four specific questions why do you exist obviously you may say that x y z institute or college exist to offer undergraduate postgraduate research and skill development programs what is the purpose of being in existence second statement what is the purpose of being in existence what is the purpose and if you tape if you bring before you uh, to you one slide objectives of higher education what is the purpose of being in existence why our colleges are there objectives of higher education preparing for employment preparing active citizen in a for a democratic society personal development and development of broad base and advanced knowledge this is the purpose of being in existence third question which our your mission statement must answer what are the organizational values our values could be human centric rural centric commitment teamwork quest for excellence strategic planning this could be your organizational values mutual faith 
ट्रस्ट एंड फोर्थ क्वेश्चन हाउ दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिस्टिंग फ्रॉम अदर्स इफ यू रिमेंबर फर्स्ट फ्यू स्लाइड्स आई मेंशन ऑफ टू स्लाइड्स दैट यू माइट बी वर्किंग आइदर इन ए रूरल एरिया सेमी अर्बन अर्बन और मेट्रो सिटीज यू माइट बी एड्रेसिंग टू द ट्राइबल्स ट्राइबल गर्ल्स पुअर गर्ल्स और यू आर दी ओनली स्किल डेवलपमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट और यू आर रिमोटली लोकेट इंस्टीट्यूट सो हाउ दैट यूर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिस्टिंग फ्रॉम सिमिलर अदर सो माई डियर प्रोफेसर दो वी फॉलो ए स्ट्रेटेजिक प्लानिंग अप्रोच टू दी मिशन स्टेटमेंट डेवलपमेंट यू मस्ट नो दैट your mission statement must answer these four questions why do you exist what is the purpose of being in existence what are the organizational values and how the organization distinct from others why the organization exist who we are what we do as many of us with due respect to you all and as i told you there are every time some exceptions are there but many times faculty don't know why the organization exist who we are what we do what basic need that we fulfill what are the core values of the organization see mission statement is such a important statement if leadership could with a stakeholder with all faculty staff student society parent come out with a mission statement then everybody involved will come to know who we are what we do what basic needs we fulfill what are the core values of the organization and what is the unique nature of our organization that differentiate from others because i understand and you will also agree with me you may agree with me that every institute is a unique institution so this is the significance or this is the important of mission statement and you should you should follow a systematic process of designing the the mission statement by following a very systematic aspect of developing you know, ap approach to the mission of the organization so mission statement should tell you why do you exist what is the purpose of being in existence what are the organizational values so academic leadership can govern the institution by developing a good governance mechanism tool through mission which will help students staff faculty and society to know that why this institution exists what is the purpose what are our core values because everyone must know the core values that quest for excellence commitment teamwork inclusiveness diversity all is the core values of our organization and that is why in the governance is very important to have a good mission statement of our organization now when we go for this mission statement as i given you the example you can definitely every institution offers they exist to have undergraduate postgraduate research or skill development programs why do you exist as i told you the purpose of higher education objective you can write and you can mention about your core values core values will help student staff faculty top management to get stick up to the value to follow the values mutual respect trust honesty employability quest for excellence quality commitment 
डेडिकेशन देन एकेडमिक लीडरशिप इज इम्पॉर्टंट देन गवर्नेंस इज पॉसिबल सो वी हैव टू डेवलप ए गुड मिशन स्टेटमेंट बाय इन्वॉल्विंग do other and the faculty staff and student must understand that how our institution is different from similar other what is vision a single statement what the organization want to be what and when <clears throat> not only what what when take an example vision what the organization want to be say for example i i set a vision suppose i belong to a belong to my institute belong to a tribal area that to the remote place then my vision is we want to be a center for excellence i am repeating again i want to be my institution shall be or will be center for excellence for education training skill development employment and entrepreneurship of skill development of tribal students specific and rural student in general by developing a accredited and structured curriculum and institute design see very clear what is my vision vision should not be vague it should not be vague it should not be absurd vision must be same seen that and i said when say for example today we are 20 2024 i say by 2030 when 20230 vision 2030 what is vision 2030 vision 2030 is the institute will be center for excellence for education training skill development entrepreneurship of tribal students in specific and rural youth in general with a accredited institute and a structural institute and curriculum design vision this is my vision why vision should be very clear vision must be seen based upon the vision you must be able to plan your short term long term and medium term goal vision is how the organization wants to be perceived in the future what success look like see very important academic how you people as academic leader can create a good governance is begin journey begin with mission and vision having you the insight of education knowledge of education concept of education you having a knowledge and the requirement of national education policy global needs you can create a good governance and you can create a good vision among the faculty students your stakeholders how the organization wants to be pursued in the future and expression of the desired end state see once you design a vision statement your end state is you have defined the expression of the desired end state challenges everyone to reach for something so everyone is involved if vision is not clear mission is not clear there won't be a participation in nac present ssr 6.1.1 6.2 1.2 ask you about the decentralization participation reflection of mission and vision but they are not been seen is because only that vision is not clear it is not properly propagated and it is significant inspire a compelling future and provide a long term focus for the entire organization see my dear professor how vision is important and as i said very beginning vision cannot be developed by individual person mission cannot be developed by individual single person we required all people to involve into that and you will find as as i will very specifically would like to 
all my faculty teachers, professors, that if you develop, imbibe these essence among the your faculty member, your leaders of your institution, your principal, your management, then definitely we are going to reach to what we are seeing. We have read our vision of NEP 2020. And in that context, we want our vision and mission to be there. So vision help how the organization wants to be pursued in the future. It create a challenges to everyone to reach for something and is significant, inspires a compelling future, provides a long-term focus. We can plan. You know that your vision, that you want to be a, want to be a center for excellence for tribal students. Yeah, number one, education, training, skill development, employability, entrepreneurship. You can plan systematically. You can set the goals. You can decide the program. You can decide the learning strategy. You can decide the collaboration. You can decide the resources. You can decide the manpower. See how the vision help us to plan. And you as an academic leader help into that, accept into that. So to summarize all these things, education, career, and life is important. Mission and organization for self and organization is very important. We have to think that, we have to think, this is my own philosophy of which I have developed, I and the world, how I can be useful to the my family, to my society, to my profession, to my organization, to my nation, and to my to the nation and to the entire world. We have to go very strategic approach, going for the mission and vision, and we can develop the leadership capabilities among the students. That is how we can systematically, systematically go and we can achieve the excellence in the institution, excellence in the organization, and we can really demonstrate the academic leadership to the students. Okay. Yeah. Before going to the next slides, yes, any questions, please? Yes, any question? Okay, no questions? Fine. If no questions, I will I will go further. Go ahead. Yeah. Friends. Hope I'm not going fast. Let me have a sip of water. I hope uh, uh, you are you are learning, you are enjoying the session, uh, and you are with me. And uh, yes, definitely, I call you as an education leaders of tomorrow. So with this summary, let us move further to the next slide. <clears throat> Again, as APJ Abdul Kalam says, to succeed in your mission, you must have a single-minded minded devotion to your goal. I did not tell you by this time you must have realized that uh, Honorable late APJ Abdul Kalam is hero for everyone, like is hero for me. And his quotes are always inspiring, motivating. And not only that, they are very knowledgeable. Okay, this is a this is a knowledge quote. To succeed in your mission, you must have a single-minded devotion to your goal. If we read this uh, particular uh, quote by Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam sir, we we realize ki yar, yar mera profession how that I, my profession can contribute if I have a really uh, a single-minded devotion to my goal. And again, I am telling you when I am saying single-minded devotion to your goal, your career goal, your professional goal, and even your life goal. Because again and again, when I'm talking, sometimes I feel that I'm on, talking on a very...
I will go to the slide which I was dealing with and then I will open. Just give me one minute. As we were here. Is it is it visible to you? Can you see the can you see the wait I'm again I will stop share and I will again I will again join with you just wait just wait. Yeah, is it visible to you, all of you, please? Yeah, fine, thank you, thank you. So <clears throat> we go with the next slides. Yeah, fine, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We move to the next slide. Now, since we have to, we have to go, we have to plan for the part second is demonstrating the leadership, how planning has to be done. The core that we have to understand, once we know the governance, means once we know the governance, we know the leadership as
sir now you can unmute yourself sir i have made you a co-host okay thank you thank you so much uh dear professor i am very sorry uh, we got stuck up because of the uh, connection uh, yeah yeah so when when we talk of uh, going for preparation four questions which you must ask ourselves four questions you must ask yourself that how we can as a teacher as a teacher how we can go and participate as a as a teacher as a as a philosopher in making student in making student yeah i'm just opening this slide just wait huh? i want to show you a slide since there was some little problem of connection it could not open now it will open so four questions which the we should ask to ourselves that what are the purpose institute seek to attain number first question that we should ask to ourselves as a institute not as a individual but at departmental level at institute level this question must be asked that what organizational purposes we should seek to attain second question which we should ask ourselves what purpose what experience should be given what experiences should be given to meet these purposes to meet these purposes okay this is a second question which we need to ask ourselves whenever we are preparing our student to work on this then the third question which we have to ask whenever we reach to the student is how this organization of the learning expenses can be properly planned because when we as a teacher this is this is to be the thing as a teacher even as a head of department or even when you work in the light of in the light of the in the light of i am going little fast i'm going little fast to just uh, speed the time those four slide which i am missing sorry friends for this inconvenience please so what educational purposes should the institute seek to attain the core i am telling you the management part of that governance is of a mission vision policy and strategic plan as we discuss but when we go for a management we have to ask four specific questions to at institute level at institute level even we will have to ask these questions at departmental level and sometime at individual level too second question what educational experiences can be provided that are likely to attain these purposes these are the very fundamental questions which we have to ask third question how can these educational experiences can be effectively organized we have to think on to that whenever you go to the macro level of management and the last question how can we determine whether and to what extent these purposes are being attained taylor has given these four fundamental questions and when we talk about educational leadership 
i find that at managing management level we need to find the answer to these four questions which will help us to manage the activity what educational purpose should institute seek to attain in the mission statement our second question was what is the purpose of institute same purpose will come here now to develop purpose again i will go back i will go back that suppose my purpose of the institution is to prepare student for employment number 1 personal development number 2 number 3 i am going to develop them as a democratic citizen okay so oh, sorry active citizen in a democratic society and the last broad base and knowledge base advanced knowledge base suppose these are the four purposes then what educational experiences can be pro provided they are that are likely to attain these purposes then you have to plan at faculty level at course subject level at departmental level at institute level these are my purposes so across the duration of program what learning experiences classroom will be there interactive classroom will be there assignments will be there field visits will be there workshop seminar expert lecture field visit are we going to give them some seminar conferences etc 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 so all that we have to find what learning experiences are required and obviously you have to how these learning experiences can be effectively organized what you have to given in the first year second year third year if you say honors program fourth year so this system but here we required a management here we required a decentralization here we required a participation here we required a proper organization structure who is going to look after the industrial visit field visit who is going to take the part of the entrepreneurship development skill development so proper participation decentralization is essential and continuously you should enhance and see that whether these purposes are attained or not so your feedback mechanism which you do in 1.4.1 in criteria number 1 of nag similar we have to now keep continue in future also uh, specifically specifically for alumni who are pass out from our students and to have a management you also have to think out not only mission and vision mission and vision then what are the program educational objectives of your institute of your department of your programs program education objectives are the career and professional achievement after graduation after graduation what are the career and professional achievement 3 to 5 that you have to plan program outcomes after graduation or by the end of graduation what knowledge and ability the graduates will have program outcomes course outcome if you are teaching a subject any course what are the outcomes what knowledge and ability we are going to give so the academic leadership from macro level to micro level at if you are a head of department or a senior professor or a principal of the institution or even if you are a experienced senior officer uh, assistant professor of that particular subject you have to ensure that the leadership is demonstrated at course level so design downward this is known as a design downward and then we have to go in the implementing while we go for the upward designment this is specifically outcome based education and to go with the outcome based education approach when we follow the outcome based ed education approach we have to show now we those who are gone through the entire document of national education policy 2020 there are one nine places location in the document where they have mentioned about the outcome based education 
now we our academic leadership management part we have to focus on how this outcome at course level at program level at professional level are been developed and we are marching to the mission and vision of the institution and hence we we have to have a very systematic approach to enhance the academic excellence for this we required a management management is required for achieving according to one's abilities developing diverse talents discovering one's talents at management we required a management many times we talk about the slow learners or slow performers and advanced learners similarly in the beginning nowadays we talk about that you know every one of you that university grant commission has made it mandatory that for first year student first two weeks should be a induction program what is the purpose of induction program is to aware them about their future career the knowledge domain they are going to develop about to know about their abilities to know about their talents into that and to expose them to the world of work world of life so we when we have to manage this now when university grant commission has asked to conduct a two weeks of induction program it must be well managed so understand academic leadership governance and management managing these micro things decentralization participation well governance and organization structure is very important at the institute level and for that obviously we have to ensure that governance which refers to the systems and processes put in place to ensure that organization operate ethically transparently and in alignment with the objective of stakeholders interest we have to very systematically go we have to systematically go with the governance of that which really ensures that systems and processes are ethically planned transparent aligned with the objectives of stakeholders so now you will come to know the more and more power of the academic leaders is governance and leadership it involves establishing policies procedures controls to oversee decision making risk management and compliance so governance will help you to monitor us to comply to the requirement to make decision making you may now by this time you might have realized or might be experiencing that we have to work on a very professional way on a scientific way is not that we are working in a industry which is producing producing some component we are we are creating the knowledgeable minds skillful mind emotional minds in that context our governance and management need to be very very important governance framework often include mechanism for accountability transparency and effective communication between different level of organization and stakeholders is very important when governance will ensure a transparency in communication it will set the accountability today one of the reason why ministry of education or national education policy is emphasizing on autonomy because day by day because of the affiliative pattern we are losing the accountability we are putting every responsibility on the university we need to become the accountable though the curriculum is designed by the university academic calendar is given by the response by the university we are accountable for implementation assessment ensuring quality so is to so when we are going to the new educational policy 2020 governance has a unique unique feature and that's why a mechanism has to be developed the accountability and transparency has to be developed into that 
and obviously for the effective governance clear governance structure is important don't go with the lazy fear like you do these things he will do this thing okay he is not doing now now you x y z will do no we have a clear governance structure who is director of the institution who is the deputy director of the institution or a vice principal of the institution who is the registrar who, who are the head of department who is looking up the training and placement who is going up the field visit who is going up at the student development programs who are going for the employability development program we have a clear cut governance who is going to cover the grievances etc 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 a clear governance structure into that transparency and accountability is very important for that stakeholders engagement we have to engage stakeholder stakeholders not only teachers staff students alumni parent and our external stakeholders like business and organization and industry they must be hold into the governance because this is not you and me can do these things you might be knowing a very renowned african proverb it takes an entire village to raise a child isn't it so in that context we have to work in a very systematic way so that we can demonstrate a good governance into that strategic oversight <clears throat> we have to go very strategically i am telling you right now i am working in a, one, one of the upcoming uh, university uh, in the state of maharashtra and when we see unless and until we have a strategic oversight strategic oversight will give you that now today we are, we are here in the future development of the institution how what strategies are required what different mechanism we need to create what policies we need to develop what actions are required what training programs are required etc 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 so a having good governance we should have a strategic oversight into that and obviously we required ethical standards and integrity governance i have i have observed i am very free and frank with you i have observed in in few places not may not be all places there is a lack of ethicness and integrity we are 10 20 15 faculty in one department we should have integrity we should have a human values and ethics i am as a academic leader as a future academic leader i want you to promote ethics ethical standard and integrity because if we do not maintain this integrity ethical standard the our team will disappear they will go away and we may not reach to our goal and that's why when we are planning for a good governance you have to ensure that ethical standards and integrity are met if you do not i am emphasizing on this point if you do not maintain this time this thing is going to be very difficult in the aspect so here's definitely examples that governance in higher education is guided by the institute mission vision and core values so whatever the mission and values are there mission vision values our governance is guided by them what is the purpose what should be the goals what should be the principle and how we how we can go for the shaping the strategic plan how do we go for allocation making process ensuring the alignment with the institution identity all this we with go the governance governance is very important having leadership alone is not sufficient governance will set a strategic plan it will follow the mission and vision of the institute and according to the mission and vision of institution it will go set policies set purposes set goals principles and align the institute governance framework include the development review and implementation of policies and procedures which governs academic and administrative operation these policies cover different academic standard student conduct 
faculty tenure, etc., etc. It may be a research policy. It may be a welfare policy. It may be a training policy. It may be ICT policy. It may be an ethical policy. It may be an academic policy. All these policies are important. If you don't have policies, if you don't have procedure, we may not be reaching to your mission and vision. Governance makes it very strong to that. And then, obviously, this governance helps the what is the leadership structure, as I told you sometime before, the governance structure in higher education. What are their defined roles? What are the different responsibilities of the people? There might be academic leaders, administrative leaders, they may be chancellors, vice chancellors, maybe deans, maybe heads of department, maybe administrative officer. We require clear line of authority and accountability to ensure effective decision making and communication process. So when we talk of effective governance, these three factors are very important. Again, I'm saying, my dear professors, you have seen the academic leadership. You have seen the aspect of academic governance too. If there is no good governance, academic leadership will not be an effective. And for that context, we have to ensure that academic governance go very in line in according to that. To happen that, obviously, the third element is management. The management in the higher education encompasses to the day-to-day -day operations of academic program, administrative function, and support services. See, when we even prepare a university calendar or institute academic calendar or departmental academic calendar or we prepare timetables or we prepare course plan or program plan or we go for a daily plan. If it is well structurally designed, it will showcase the management. I'm giving, taking you back to those four slides. Taylor has given four slides. What purposes institutes seek to attain? What experiences are required to attain these purposes? How to organize these learning experiences? And how to assess? So you must have realized that our day-to-day -day activities are very important. Education has to be taken in a very scientific, systematic way to go into that. Academic managers, departmental chairs, and administrative leaders are responsible for resource allocations, budget management, personal supervision to ensure the efficient functioning of the institution. These points become very important to you and me at this instant when we are implementing national education policy. At this instant, national education policy, Ministry of Education, University Grant Commission is promoting granting autonomy to the institute. And when we granting the autonomy to the institution, this managerial activity of right from preparing the budget, resource allocation, managing the budget, personal supervision is very important to all of us. And in that context is going to become very important to all we people. Effective management in higher education involves strategic enrollment planning, curriculum development, student support services, research administration, and facilities management to provide and conducive learning environment for students and support the institution academic mission. This last para is very important in context to the governance 
in context to the leadership and management too. Where do we require management? When we think, when we talk about where really we require management, we require very effective management, strategic enrollment planning, admission to the institute, many institution complaints, students are running to the cities, they want to go to urban areas, they want to go to metro, urban want to get to go to metro students, rural students want to go to urban institution. We have to plan for retaining the students. So strategic enrollment planning for admission, enrollment, that planning is required. We require planning for curriculum development. Today you are affiliated institute, but tomorrow you are going to become an autonomous institute. You must know the science and methodology of curriculum development. Not only that, in the present context, when we are working for the accreditation by NAC, we know that NAC is asking for value-added program, add-on program, skill development program. This is nothing but a delta X of the curriculum to match the employment need, student development need. And for that, you must know, you must have a structure in place in the institution which takes place of the curriculum development and implementation. Student support services are required. Student support services, it may be a hostel, it may be mess, it may be a library, it may be a computer center, it may be a mentoring services, it may be a career guidance services. There are so many services we require student. They are going to want to go for NSS, sports and cultural services, all that we want to make very sincerely so that we can provide conducive learning environment to the student and really support the institute academic mission. My dear professors, I know majority of you are doing well in your institution, but through this Mother Malviya mission teacher training program, with the sensitization of national education policy, we are not realizing or understanding the different roles of teacher why this organization structure matters, why mission and vision matters in the institution and what type of the arrangement that we have to go into that. So in the elements of management, we have to go for academic program management. Okay. This academic program management is nothing but as I told you sometime before that we have to plan. Suppose your department is offering two undergraduate program and one postgraduate program, say for example. So for two undergraduate program and one postgraduate program, what is your academic planning? What you are going to offer them during two years, three years or four years of program apart from classroom teaching? laboratory teaching, what additional to develop their knowledge base, advanced knowledge, to develop holistic personality, to prepare their them for employment, to develop them human values. See friends, the academic domain, the subject domain, the research domain, and other aspect of the academic, which you have seen the in the objectives of higher education for that management is required. So academic program management is required. Financial management is required. At program level, at departmental level, at institute level, because when we have to give the variety of learning experiences, when we have to give or go for a collaborative experiences. When we have to go for like internship, field visit, 
the financial management plays very important making budgets ensuring budgetary proposal in time ensuring budget approval before conduct of the activity submitting the compliance budget utilization report after the program gets over and reviewing the budget quarterly or monthly or bi yearly this is how biannually that you have to do so financial management human resource management we know that every individual has got some skills unique skills some are very good in tip management some are very good in the sports some are good in cultural some are good in research some are good in facility management some are very good in cultural management so you have to make human resource management which is required for different applications in the management level research administration with the introduction of bachelor's program four years bachelor program for arts and commerce for engineering already it was there in that case we go with a say engineering honors program where in one domain say 18 credit you are giving them some higher level academic knowledge there and even all programs we want to develop the research aptitude among the undergraduate post graduate and research student so research administration for student even for faculty and research scholar of the institution must be there and for research administration your policies are important but promoting students teachers to write publish research work papers attending conducting seminars conferences is very important not only that in current days we talk of intellectual property rights and for that also we required research administration so we have to focus on this part of that student affairs management this is very important uh, which we discuss in the previous slide to student affairs right from their admission pre admission career counseling their admissions they required hostels they required mess they required scholarship they required fees concession they required some internship they required some training they want to go for a some field visit industrial visit they want to play etc 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 so we must have have a good management for the student affairs management so friends this aspect along with which we also go for the information technology management in the institution yes based upon your ict policy yes you can provide wifi lease line whatever whatever is your ict policy but information technology management cyber security management and now we instruct student and teacher to work or oh sorry to use information and communication technology in teaching and learning we we ask student and faculty to do mooc courses swayam courses nptel courses we ask teacher to review my our last lecture we ask student to see some videos youtubes for the academic reasons we required learning management system so all this we required information technology management your social media your website your mis or erp whatever you call it as it should be well managed and that's why because today we say that the knowledge has come to the our tip okay so but then it's not only that we have to manage systematically for that and that's why a strategic alignment of our management activities with institutional goals priority mission is very important part of that so 
you as a managing institution you have to work at this micro level process optimization this is important identify opportunities for streamlining the workforce and improving the efficiency reducing the bureaucracy in the administrative and operational process is very important strategic alignment what happens if all stakeholders they don't know mission vision they don't know short goal medium term goal long term goal they don't know strategic programs they don't know core values they don't know planning they must know because otherwise aligning these activities with institutional goals and priorities become very difficult so that will help us so strategic alignment is important optimizing the process make it very easy i was told in one organization if teacher has to take a leave he is required to go to 10 different teachers or officers to get the sanction why why so much of bureaucracy you should have you should have a efficient way you should have a transparent way and the as far as bureaucracy your policy should be very clear and that's why we require decentralization and participation your policy is very clear it is only lack of policies bureaucracy take the birth in the organization it is only because lack of accountability the bureaucracy take the birth in the institution and that's why we have to take a proper care in making or removing or reducing bureaucracy in administrative and operational process everything be well structured into that communication and collaboration fostering very open communication channel collaborations huh? administrator faculty staff student stakeholders very important many time due to the lack of communication communication we are unable to reach to our goals and our objectives and hence we have to have a very effective communication that's where organization culture matters the collaborative the democratic leadership whenever required you be autocratic but you must be work in a team work team work must be there transparency must be there participative management must be there delegation of authorities to the staff and student and faculty should be done in such a fashion your management practices must be well done good transparency is very important so communication and collaboration with the internal and external stakeholder has to be ensured very clearly so friends that will reach to the performance management see academic leadership and governance required good management too because in the performance management we are going to establish clear performance metrics and goals for department for unit for individual and to provide regular feedback and support for performance improvement if really we want to reach to our mission and vision our mechanism for performance management performance appraisal system Okay, you must have heard about performance appraisal and development system. Must be rigorously, rigorously articulated. There must be key performance performance indicator for all department, all units, all sections. There must be key performance indicator even for the students by way of rubrics, what knowledge and skill they must be developed. so a performance management is essential tool which is developed in good management and adaptability and innovation we must learn to adapt 
embrace innovation and adapt management strategies in response to changing internal and external factor such as technological advancements demographic demographic graphic shift and economic trends adapting is very important we adopt and adapt adapting with means with changing circumstances see now there is going to be in some cases we will observe resistance to the change some may say that no no personality development is a school job it is not higher education job some may say we are not here to prepare student for job our is to give the education so these challenges are going to be there so you have to innovate approaches and you have to adapt we have to develop a ability to adapt because this national education policy 2020 is vision need the adapting to these policies these changes this procedure and that's why a innovative approach both in internal external factors somebody said uh, in the in the morning asked the question i think professor ford has asked me the question about internal question it was some institutions are set by political people this is a internal factor now how you are going to govern this internal factor what change management you are going to bring what adaptability and innovation you are going to bring into that and that democratic shift we have to bring huh? that intercultural shift we have to bring and for that management is required my dear friend that's why i said in the beginning academic leader is not only principal he is not only dean he is not only hod head of department not only professor or associate professor all we are right from a to z we all educators we are academic leaders because we have to develop students future we are leader we have to develop develop this leadership and when we individually we are not only talking about the institutional level leadership or what leadership is required for education even we are thinking of even micro level and macro level leadership that is required to the student and hence very quickly we will see what is the teacher role in academic leadership governance and management teacher contribute to academic leadership by embodying the institution mission values and educational goals in their teaching research and service activity so how this is how we in general uh, in general because we are working in a different capacity but as a teacher they participate in curriculum development program assessment and academic planning process to ensure the quality relevance and rigor of, of the academic program this is how we can really help help teacher often serve in leadership roles within their department or academic unit providing expertise guidance and mentorship to the colleagues and students see the broader scope of teachers role in academic leadership you can do you all can do in different way you can contribute you can demonstrate as a academic leader of course your role is there if you see these three statement these are in academic leadership in governance and in management in all these aspect what is the role in governance teachers participate in governance process through faculty governance different committees and task force that shape institutional policies procedures and priorities okay you can participate in the governance so you can be a good governor you can help in deciding the policies you can do the research how the strategic plans are developed how the mission and visions are developed you can contribute into that you can develop different policies etc etc they contribute to the decision making on academic matters such as curriculum development is revision academic standards faculty hiring promotion 
and student academic policies you can contribute you can contribute at all these levels see we as a teacher when we talk of governance we can we can definitely be there as a part of decision maker in academic leadership because in academic leaders uh, matter lot of decision making is required when we conduct say for example first class test and we find that student in some courses performing well in some courses not performing well that is one point where we need to take the decision some work is a absenteeism in the class there we take to need to take the decision sometime we find that our curriculum is going bit bit obsolete so some input to be given delta x for the current aspect there your leadership is required your governance is required into that teacher represent the academic perspective and advocate for the faculty and student in governance discussion ensuring that their voices are well are and considered and valued etc etc so in the governance also you have a good value you represent the academic perspective and academic value development in management teachers are involved in the management activities at various level that you are doing at right now from managing their own classroom course material in future and participating in departmental and program administration many of you must be doing but in future in the light of the uh, the curriculum holistic education multiple multidisciplinary education we need to work on this they collaborate with the administrator and staff to coordinate academic schedule aligning the resources implement academic initiative and support students learning and success as i said you mentoring and all these things teacher contribute to the efficient operation of academic program by adhering to the policies procedure meeting deadline and communicating effectively with colleagues and students see the and what is the role of management so though we have discussed this point but these slides ask tell you about what the specific requirement is there so there are certain factors which affect huh, our academic leadership governance and management limited resources resistance to the change bureaucracy and red tape lack of training and development inadequate communication and collaboration we need to focus on how we can overcome these uh, these factors we have to work on overcoming these factors so resources resistance which i have already mentioned into that unclear roles and responsibilities resistance from the stakeholder sometime there is a resistance from stakeholder even students sometime resist external pressure and influences leadership turnover sometime principal is changing or management changes there i have seen some institution when there was a change in the management significant havoc was, was there so that will be there which we have to overcome complexity of the higher education environment that we need to properly plan so friends the uh, very good interconnect is required between leadership governance and management while leadership governance and management have a distinct roles and functions they are interconnected and complementing in driving organizational success effective leadership inspires and guide people governance provide the framework for decision making and accountability and management ensure the execution of plans and achievement of the objectives together they contribute to the overall effectiveness and sustainability of an organization so friends this is how we we can see how we can really work and to conclude life as a teacher begins the day you realize that you are always a learner life as a teacher begins the day you realize that you are always a learner so friends 
with this quote we say as we always respect apj abdul kalam sir with his words i conclude don't take rest after your first victory don't take rest after your first victory because if you fail in second more leaps are waiting to say that your first victory was just by luck so friends keep continuing keep continuing thank you so much for your patient listening i know 3 hours you are connected and uh, you have listened to my lecture your feedback is open uh, i think it's uh, uh, almost 5:30 but a few questions are there you can ask this is my book on outcome based education theory and practice especially written for the higher education thank you so much over to you if you have any question you can ask question thank you all this is my email id firstfond@gmail.com i once again thank you you all professor for being with me for last 3 hours connected with me thank you thank you so much सर आपका माइक अनमूल कीजिए सर ओके आई वंस अगेन थैंक यू यू ऑल वी स्पेशल थैंक्स टू प्रोफेसर राफे सर प्रोफेसर एस एस पाटिल सर एच आर डी सी एंड थैंक्स सो मच फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी इन मदन मालविया मिशन ऑफ टीचर ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम ऑन एन ई पी टू जीरो टू जीरो थैंक यू थैंक यू टू ऑल प्रोफेसर बाय बाय सी यू May I leave now? Yes, thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.